What's up Bertini fam? Now I'm sure as you can see by the title of today's video as well as the thumbnail, um, I've been going through quite a bit of health things, um, not just recently, um, but I want to say for about the past like a uh, couple of years, things have progressively gotten a little bit worse, or not a little bit, but they, they, they've gotten worse. Um, and so Although I've done a pretty good job of hiding it, um, I've given some sneak peeks here and there of um, some of the stuff I've been going through. And so I haven't been able to film any content this week, unfortunately, because of hospital visits um, and just other stuff that has been coming up. And so um, sadly, um, I haven't been able to record. It really does suck. Um, I have quite a bit of things that I've been wanting to do and that are in the pipeline. Um, I'll give you an update on uh, some of those things in this video, but I do want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what's going on in my health. Um, I do need to head over to Lowe's. I got to pick up a, uh, I think they're called a dual hose bib or basically a hose bib that has uh, two ports on it. Um, this way when I'm cleaning my vehicles and stuff or my toys, um, I can run a regular hose as well as the, the pressure washer hose. But anyways, I'm gonna take you along in, in the Mini Cooper with me on the ride uh, to Lowe's and I'll talk to you a little bit about what's going on in my health, um, share a little bit of insights with you on that. Um, aside from that, just to give you a quick update on project stuff. Um, so I'm considering, I don't know if many of you know this, but I am, uh, very into RC vehicles. Um, I haven't played with mine in quite some time. Sorry about that. Uh, my daughter was coming out to throw the trash out uh, while I was recording. Um, and my, uh, my daughter didn't really care to be on camera much. But um, anyways, um, I have this uh, RC car here um, that I'm thinking about going back and restoring. I noticed like some of my rods here got like rusted. Um, some of the screws and stuff. I'm not sure why it happened. I'm assuming because the hardware isn't um, stainless steel and maybe that's the, the cause for it. But I was thinking about like taking this all apart and cleaning it out and like really doing a good restoring um, job on it. Maybe like bluing some of the components uh, so that they don't rust in the future. Um, there's a lot of money that went into this RC car. Like only the top, top of the line parts are on this thing. Um, and I pretty much built the whole thing myself. So uh, this is one that I could do and restore. I've been considering doing that. I mean, I know it's a project, but um, these things are a whole lot of fun for those of you who aren't in the RC space. Um, why is this getting stuck here? Let me see if I can get it on. I don't know why it's getting stuck. There we go. Um, but yeah, that's one item uh, that I could restore. Um, I have some other RC uh, cars there, crazy fast. That one I built for my oldest son, Miguel, who you all have seen on camera before. Um, but the Typhoon 6S, I like wide, widened it and did all this crazy stuff to make it go crazy fast and control really well. His thing um, does, I believe, like 90 some miles an hour. So his is fast. And then this one is my youngest son, Nicholas's. Um, his is still really fast too. I think his does like 60 or 50. Um, not that he ever rides it that quick, but um, his is also really quick too. Um, then an update on the quad. I'm still debating whether I'm going to be keeping this thing or selling this thing. This thing is absolutely beautiful. We did a, a ton of work to this thing, a ton of co customizations to it. Um, thing is crazy fast. I think the current top speed on it is 97 miles an hour. So this thing just scoots i mean it is it is really really quick um all done up but i'm still debating whether i'm going to keep this thing um or not or sell it and then of course i have my bike which also is for sale um at the moment <clears throat> i have my next project that i'm going to be starting here um my bike is just completely decked out so this thing is for sale also um as in terms of update there really isn't an update on this thing. This thing runs absolutely crazy. It's ridiculously fast. Um, we're putting down more horsepower and torque than the last time um, we released a video on the dyno. Uh, so hopefully in the near future, we'll be updating our dyno video on this thing, but it is over 200 horsepower. Um, I believe it's 197 foot pounds of torque. So this thing absolutely rips. It is crazy. It is a built 131 um, motor, tons of SNS parts, built transmission, Baker Grudge box. I mean, it's pretty much built everything. Um, 
yeah, this thing is done up like super, I mean, super carbon, not super carbon fiber, but carbon fiber, everything. Um, built driveline. I mean, all the best components um, in the industry are on this thing. So yeah, we'll be doing an update video on this thing. And then in terms of the Mini Cooper, um, so right now the parts that I'm waiting on um, that haven't come in yet that I've ordered, um, I have a rear diffuser that's gonna be going on here um, that I'm gonna be putting on a carbon fiber rear diffuser that is, um, which is gonna be nice because I'm gonna be removing out this whole section here. Funny enough, this is actually the part on the Mini Cooper um, that I currently dislike the most. I'm not a fan of, of this piece right here. I wish they would have did like they did on the R56 models where um, it had like an actual rear diffuser. I think that would have been so much nicer. But of course, you know, Mini has now gone more towards looking more for this like um, BMW styling, if you will. So a lot more cleaner lines. Not that I think this is cleaner lines, but it is what it is. I mean, it's what the mass public would, would perceive as cleaner lines. But, um, so yeah, that's the, the, the status on what I'm going to be doing on the rear. Um, I also have uh, carbon fiber side skirts, um, that are going to be coming in here, uh, to finish up the body there. Um, and yeah, I think that is it. There's a bunch of motor work going to be happening on this thing so oh and then i forgot but i still have um that's going to be going on the mini cooper that i have to be showing you all um is one the um the big turbo is going to be going on as well um i'm working with a manufacturer uh who's creating um they're going to be the first to market with this turbo for the f56 mini cooper platform right now it doesn't exist and this is the first um the first company doing it um and i'm going to be working with them to getting this big turbo on my f56 um not as the test platform because um this brand has already been testing it, it's already been through r d and all that stuff um but i'm going to be one of the first mini cooper f56s with this um bigger turbo system it's going to be the largest turbo that um, it's been fitted onto this this platform so that'll be cool and then I'm gonna be doing a massive massive downpipe um, right now I have a, a three inch on there um, as many of you probably know I've done tons of different test videos on the downpipes uh, but yeah I'm gonna be doing probably the biggest downpipe anybody's ever put on a Mini Cooper um, definitely on the Mini Cooper F56 platform um, so yeah, so that's pretty much a status update on that. Oh, and I forgot, I think I'm gonna be doing a big brake kit on the, uh, um, a massive six plot, pot, um, plot, six pot rotor system um, on the Mini Cooper. Oh, and the, there's so much left on the Mini Cooper. <laughs> I keep forgetting. Uh, I still have the seats to be done. Um, yeah, there's just a bunch of really cool stuff co coming to the Mini Cooper. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a reveal hopefully sometime in the future. Um, hoping everything goes well with my health. Um, I'm going to be doing a reveal on another vehicle um, that I'm going to be adding um, to the channel as well as a another motorcycle, my next, my next build. Um, so yeah, so quite a few things going to be coming. Anyways, I need to head over uh, to Lowe's. My son has a uh, quinceanera that he's gonna be in. For those of you who don't know, that's basically when um, a girl turns 15 years old in a typical like Hispanic culture. What we do is um, we celebrate her by doing a quinceanera. And so my son is the uh, cham chamberlain, I, I believe is what it's called. Um, it's basically, he's the... Um, the informal way of saying this is like the 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 quinceanera's date, so the girl's date to the the quinceanera. But the the more formal way of saying it is, um, he is the uh, the person who's accompanying her to her quinceanera. Um, so we do got to be on time, and I don't want to mess anything up for any of them. And so I do have to head over to Lowe's to get this dual hose bib um, because yeah, I need to get into um, washing my mini. Not today. Um, but washing my mini because it is absolutely filthy. Um, I haven't washed it in some time. Like I said, I've been going through some health stuff. So with that being said, let's go ahead on, go ahead and head over uh, to Lowe's um, so I can get this hose bib. Do me a big favor. Um, if you're new to my channel, you have not yet subscribed, hopefully you'll watch through this whole video and hopefully I will, um, I will give you enough good content on my channel I don't even know what I'm trying to say to be frank and 
I'm so tired. This week has been so draining. Um, anyways, at any point in this video, if you feel like subscribing to my YouTube channel and becoming a part of the Bertini family and following along in my journey, um, please click that subscribe button. Something else I almost forgot to mention. This is what happens when your brain is all over the place. But I think I'm going to be doing a series on how I became a millionaire um, before the age of 29 years old. Um, I'm considering doing this because a lot of people have asked me along um, the way how I can afford all these things. Um, and I was thinking about making a series on doing that. I've been saying that for quite some time, but a lot more people have asked me about it. Um, and so I've been considering doing a series on this. Let me know if that's something you want to know or see or um, anything you want interested in. Um, I'll definitely be posting the videos on my YouTube channel of all the steps that I, it, I took to get to that point. Um, how it all happened and yeah, and basically what you would need to do if you wanted to recreate those steps um, in getting there. I'm gonna be giving it away all for free, meaning all the information, I'm not giving away all my stuff. But um, with that being said, go ahead and roll the intro. never had um, any health issues um, up until about four years ago, I want to say. Um, so what happened was, what had happened was, um, one day my wife and I and our kids, um, so Elsie and the kids, we went out to um, Dade City, I believe it's what it's called. Um, well, Dade City is a, is a city here in Florida, but um, I believe that's where we were at. We went to this museum out in like the middle of nowhere called uh, Battle of Dade. And we're at this museum and out of nowhere, I start to have a panic attack. Um, and I didn't realize I was having a panic attack. I'd never had a panic attack before this point in time in my life. Um, and I had a panic attack. I started freaking out. I tell Elsie, I'm like, I think I'm dying. For those of you who have experienced panic attacks, I'm sure you know it, it that's the feeling that you feel that you're going through. Um, so I tell Elsie, I think I'm dying. We need to get out of here. I need you to rush me to the hospital. And so uh, we get in her vehicle and um, because she's typically the one with the family vehicles, um, we get in her vehicle and we're like rushing back to Claremont, Florida, where I live. And um, we're like flying back through the country. Um, like that's like the countryside is what I'm referring to, to get back and I didn't think I could make it. And so we ended up calling 911 and we ended up meeting an ambulance um, right as we enter in back into Lake County. And the ambulance hooks me up to the IV, starts running all my, my vitals and stuff and couldn't find anything but then ask me if I feel more comfortable in going in the ambulance to the hospital that we have here in Claremont. Them taking me back, Elsie will follow along in the vehicle with the kids, etc. So I said, sure, um, let's do that. And so we get in the vehicle, we go all the way to the hospital and um, not to make a long story longer, but uh, what ended up happening was the doctor tells me all my, my vitals are perfect, everything looks good. Basically he says I'm as healthy as a 19 year old uh, kid and I wasn't even sure if that was a good thing or not, not a good thing because I'm like 19 year olds eat like complete crap um, Is that a good thing or a bad thing and the doc? You know, he was I remember him laughing and he was like no, it's a good thing all your vitals check out good everything's good um, it, Do you struggle with any form of like mental illnesses? And I'm like what like what are you talking about? And I'm like do you mean like like you know PTS or anything like that? And um, he's like, sure, you know, anything along those lines. And anyways, I basically told him, like, in a nutshell, I'm like, no, you know, I don't, I don't struggle with any of these things. Um, and so he's like, well, you had what's called a panic attack. Now, I've heard of panic attacks before. I didn't realize, like, 
that they could just hit anybody at any point in time in their life. I am just naive to these things. And, um, and it was hard to admit that I had this. I think the man in me was like, there's no way this form of weakness can be, or at least in my perception, it was a form of weakness. And I'm like, there's no way this can be happening to me. You know, no way that happened. And turns out that's what I had. I had a panic attack. Um, and from this point on in my life, uh, I feel like my health was dramatically impacted because the way that my body then started reacting to stress was very different than it's reacted to stress before in my whole life. Um, and I've been in lots of different stressful environments, um, like really, really high amounts of stress where I've been able to process through and work through. And, and so for me, it was really hard to admit you know, that this is happening and like I would have to deal with this, but I realized that my brain started dealing with stress very differently. Um, anyway, so uh, once again, not to make a long story longer, but I ended up after this occurrence, I found out that what led me all to this was my father's death. Um, so my dad had died. My dad and I were like super, super tight. I felt like my dad was probably the only person on this earth that I could trust. And, um, and, and like, this is crazy. I've been with my wife for 18 years now. Um, at the time it was 14 years. Um, and while I trust my wife, it's a very different bond that I had with my dad. Um, and it, it was really hard. And so like, it was so hard. I was not able to talk about my dad's death till about a year ago, year and a half ago, maybe without like completely bursting out into like childlike crying. Like that's how bad it, it, my dad's death affected me. And, um, and so you, that was really traumatizing for me. And so that I think, you know, looking back and speaking to therapists that I think is what led to my panic attacks or my panic attack at that time happening after this event, that panic attack, I had several more after, um, until I sought out therapy and learned how to, um, control the situation as best as I could. Um, and still sometimes I fail. You know, I fail at it, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, I, I don't wanna take medications. I know of, um, I've heard of a lot of horror stories from people who have taken um, the med medications. Um, I, lot, I have a lot of buddies of mine who, um, who deployed, who came back and had to, um, or not had to, but were advised to get on these medications and um, it wasn't favorable. And so for me, it's, it, it is a challenge. I'm not gonna knock anybody who needs these medications, but um, it, it, it wasn't for me. Um, and so anyways, uh, learning how to process through these things, these panic attacks through, through therapy, it's helped out a lot. But then I started having anxiety attacks. Um, and that added, you know, that added a, a bunch of problems in itself. And then I started thinking that like any th little thing that happened in my body, almost like a hypochondriac to a, to a certain extent, that I was dying, that I was gonna die. And for those of you who are new to my channel or haven't been watching my channel for a long time, my wife's been a stay-at-home mom well over a decade. Um, and I have a lot of stresses. Um, I own several businesses. Um, I have a, uh, a very good career. Um, I have a lot of uh, financial investments and so, I know people say I've never seen anybody with money, you know, crying on a jet ski and stuff like that, but that, that's not true. And the reason why it's not true um, is because money can only take you so far. Like it, it really can, um, especially not emotionally. And with money comes a lot of stress, typically. I'm not saying that's the case for everybody, but at least in my case scenario, um, having wealth has added a lot of stress to my life in numerous ways. Um, there's a lot of responsibility that I have across many different verticals, um, which adds a lot of stress to my life. And so anyways, um, about, I want to say about a year and a half ago, and those who have been, you know, watching my channel for some time, maybe remember around this time I was going through some health issues, but, um, I ended up having, um, to have done a, oh man, I forgot to stop and get gas. I got to do that on the way back. This is what happens when I talk. Um, I'm like super specific, by the way. Like I have to only get shell gas. Like I can't get any other gas. So I'll avoid my vehicles getting anywhere remotely close to empty if I see a shell gas station, just so I can 
um, have shell gas in my vehicles. All my vehicles, even my wife's vehicle, toys, everything only gets shell gas. Um, and I just passed the shell gas station. So, getting back to what I was saying, um, about a year and a half ago, I was having tons of stomach issues and I went in and had a colonoscopy and an endoscopy done because nobody could figure out what my issues were um, with my body and my stomach. I've seen tons of specialists, tons of different doctors, um, and nobody could figure it out. So my primary recommended I go and see a, um, uh, I forgot what they're called, gastrologist, gast gast the person who does the stomach stuff. I'm slipping my mind right now. It's funny, I, I just literally made another appointment with them the other day and now it's slipping my, my mind. Um, a gastrologist, gast gasto and Yes. I'm sure some of you will connect, correct me in the, the comment section, but it's all good. I'll find out when I, when I get back home. But anyway, so my spe uh, my primary recommended I go see one. I go and see one, says, hey, let's let's do a, um, a colonoscopy and an endoscopy, figure out what's going on here. And um, immediately, as a dude, I was freaked out because like all dudes, or like most dudes, um, especially it's not like a masculine thing to do and be like, yeah, I'm getting a colonoscopy. You know, it's kind of like, nothing's going up my butt, you know? And, um, but I was scared, man. Not gonna lie, I was really scared. Um, I thought I was gonna die and I, I was like making like all these, like I was doing a will and a trust and like making sure that the kids were set and Elsie was set. I wanted to make sure like Elsie didn't have to work ever again for the rest of her life and like, I had everything financially set for all of them that they were good to go, right? I'm doing all this paperwork and stuff. That's how scared I was. And so um, I ended up, oh, gotta stop for pedestrians here at Lowe's. Um, and so I ended up uh, going in and getting the, um, going in and getting a colonoscopy done and an endoscopy. And the doctor said, the doctor who did the procedure, um, he said, uh, that they didn't find any sort of like cancerous things like nope I think they're called polyps um, or anything like that but what they did find was numerous ulcers and that could be due to like spicy food um ooh, what nice no, got a parking here right in the front um, by the way at nighttime I never park in the front um, and there's a reason for that because I feel like um, it's not safe for women in parking lots um, at night, regardless of what people say out there. It, it really isn't safe. And so um, I'd prefer that if I let the parking space open, hopefully that there would be um, a woman who, who can get that, that parking space um, and be a little bit safer than having to park way at the end of the parking lot. But it's daytime right now, so I'm good. Um, anyways, so I end up going to see the um, gas, 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 whatever they're called, the gastro person. <laughs> um, I end up going to see them. We do the colonoscopy, the endoscopy. They don't find any polyps, but they find the ulcers. And um, I do eat a lot of spicy food. Like I love really, really spicy foods. Um, and so that could have been a part of the issue, but the doctor basically asked me like about my life and all the stuff um, that's going on in my life and talking to me about some of the stresses. And turns out that stress can cause ulcers. And I know some doctors believe that and some doctors don't because I've spoken with enough specialists now um, to know this. But uh, apparently the way our brains work is that what happens is, is when we go under high stress, it causes our bodies to produce more acids in our stomach. And that causes like all these stomach issues, right? And I work in my life is like high, high, high stress, operating high stress environments. Um, and so, yeah, that, um, actually, you know what? Let's go in the lows. Let me get this real, the, the hose bib real quick. I'll take you in with me. Um, get the hose bib and then I'll come back and I'll start off where I left off. All right, let's see here. What are we looking for? Double hose bibs. Oh, here we go. Um, doing that has four of them. I don't need four. Um, I do need to, I wonder if I should get this one, what's the difference, 20% greater flow, brass construction, contractor grade, why is this 20% better flow, I wonder if it's because it has a bigger 
hole. Let's go ahead and get this and check out and get out of this store and get back to the story. So like always, I came in a Lowe's for one thing and I end up with a lot more things. Um, well, not a lot more in this case. I bought a quick disconnect um, kit for my, uh, my pressure cleaning system. So now I'll be able to like quickly um, or quickly disconnect and connect myself. So I got, I got the fittings for um, the longer hose gun and then I also got the, an extra fitting for the, the smaller hose gun. So now we're ready to uh, check out and get back on the road. Uh, so getting back to the whole story um, of where I left off. Um, I hope I didn't just hit the curb. I don't think I did, but I hope I didn't. Um, I might have just ran over a rock or something. Anyways, so um, they found, the doctor had found the ulcers. Sure, no thank you needed. That was funny, I let somebody go even though I had the right away technically, but it's all good. They didn't say thank you. You should always say thank you. Um, it's all good, maybe they're having a bad day or something, right? So, uh, they ended up finding the ulcers and um, prescribed me some medication called pantoprazole, which I was prescribed to take for two months. And um, for me, it didn't help me get better at all. Um, I actually ended up gaining uh, some weight, which I've never really been like, um, my build is just not to technically be like overweight, if you will. I mean, I know, look what life, it happens. Um, but that's just not the way my frame is designed. Um, and so yeah, I put on a bunch of weight and, um, which of course also impacted like self-esteem issues and all other insecurities had started popping up, um, while taking this medication. So I, I opted out of taking it further and I didn't feel like it was helping me. Basically what this medication does is it lowers your stomach acids um, so that your stomach doesn't produce as much acid, I guess. And so that's supposed to help allow the time for the ulcers to heal. So, uh, nothing ended up healing in my opinion. It still felt, I still felt the same way. Um, now fast forward, um, a little bit, I've had continued to had stomach, continued to have had stomach problems, um, which, it was like sharp pinches, um, feeling like I'm going to regurgitate all the time, um, like I'm gonna throw up, uh, feeling like knots in my throat, like all these problems, uh, not being able to consume coffee anymore. So I haven't had coffee in like four years, three, three years, um, not four, yeah, like three years I haven't had any coffee um, because coffee would lead to um, an anxiety attack, um, or a panic attack, like it, it was just, it's pretty bad. And there were certain foods that would make it worse, etc. cetera. Um, and so no coffee whatsoever, certain foods completely eliminated out. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been a struggle, honestly. It's been really depressing, it's been a struggle. When you're limited to very few food choices, um, that is a challenge, especially like me growing up, I used food as a means um, to satisfy but I didn't realize at the time was depression. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was it was really hard. Um, so, ended up in the hospital several times in the past few years, like in the ER. Um, and last week, um, or this past week, or actually the last few weeks, I ended up having to go um, to the ER because I couldn't breathe. And not like a panic attack, couldn't breathe. Like, like my body, what my throat was closing up every time I would gasp for air, like go for air. Um, my lung felt like it was hitting against my rib cage. It was really, really odd. I was getting sharp pains. Where's that race car? I hear a race car. I oh, know it's not a race car. It's just a Ford Raptor. Um, well, I guess maybe a race car, off-road race car, a race truck, off-road race truck. Um, why when you say truck, you got to say like a truck. It's a truck. I drive a car. A truck, um, but so, uh, yeah, last week I ended up with these pains, um, or the past few weeks and these sharp pains on my stomach, but it was horrific like, absolutely, it felt like I was legitimately being stabbed like in multiple places. It was just such a, a horrible, like, horrible, horrible pain. 
Um, and so um, I rushed to the ER, get checked out, and um, turns out that I had a bunch of inflammation uh, in my lungs and in my stomach intestines. Like my basically my body was just like inflamed. Um, like my in insides were inflamed. And it was freaky. Like it was so bad again, I made like a, a video saying bye to everybody, like my, my end of day video, if you will. Like I thought I was gonna die. And I made a video basically like, you know, saying sorry to people I've hurt, um, leaving my kids, my wife a message, letting them know what to do, who to reach out to, um, recognizing my friends who have been there along the way. And I mean like true, true friends to me um, who were there with me when I was homeless all the way to when I became a millionaire, like those friends, you know, no matter what, they always stood by me. I recognize them. Um, just calling out people like individuals names and just thanking them for, for what they added to my life. And, um, I thought I was going to die. You know, I legit thought I was going to die. That's how bad the pain was. Um, and so, yeah, they got me on anti-inflammatories now. Um, this is where I'm currently at with it. Um, I'm hoping that it gets better. Um, it has been, you know, a big, a big challenge for me, uh, dealing with this also too, like I've learned along the way, you'd be surprised how many people are dealing with things just like you. And especially like, at least for me with men, I've realized over the years, cause I've become a lot more vulnerable, um, with my emotions and with talking to men about them. I've lost friends to suicide. Um, and I realized that there is, um, a lot of that comes to the fact that we can't talk to each other. Um, men were very like, you know, it has to be macho. Everything has to be tough. You can't show any sort of, you know, weakness whatsoever. You can't apologize for nothing. You got to be like hard and, you know, like all the time, um, especially in the areas that I grew up in, you couldn't show like any form of weakness at all. Uh, and, and I mean, that's just in general with being a man, but I feel like on top of that, it's, you know, added in, in, in rougher areas, it's added on top of that. It's really like this, like, you know, lion kind of mentality, like, or animalistic mentality. Um, and anyways, I've learned over the years that that's not how I want to raise my kids. It's not how I want to raise my boys. That's not how I want to have my friends in my inner circle. I don't want them to think like, like that, like they can't share their emotions, you know, and, you know, universe forbid they, they take their life because of something like that. Like that, that would kill me a lot more than just speaking up and asking them to express themselves and express their emotions. And so, um, these days I'm a lot more transparent with the issues that I go through. I'm a lot more transparent with my struggles, everything. I'm a lot more transparent because I've realized that people appreciate that. And it also helps people to open up themselves. Um, and so that's how I live my life now. And that's why I try to spread the message um, that I spread now. Anyways, I need to put some gas in this mini because my wife left it on uh, somewhat empty. Shout outs to Elsie for uh, leaving me without that. Anyways, let me go put gas in. Getting back to the story. So over the years, I've become a lot more um, empathetic, sympathetic, as well as um, somebody who's a lot more transparent about the stuff that I go through because I've realized that in like, at least with me, if people would have been that way with me, it would have helped me out along the way in my own struggle, in my own journey, um, because people were not transparent with me. Um, especially men were very like, you know, once again, it's just that hard shell to crack, you know, and I get why a lot of men do it. I know why I did it. Um, for many reasons, right? Fear of rejection, not, not being accepted, um, fear of being looked at as weak or being looked at as less than. Um, but I mean, the truth is, of course, we all struggle. We all have our insecurities. There's, there's things that we all go through and it's okay to share these things. It's okay to talk about these things, um, especially with other men, because if not, I've seen what can happen and it can be detrimental to our lives if we don't share these kind of things. And so that's why I try to be as open as possible. But yeah, the, the reason for not having a video on any vehicle related content, on any motorcycle, quad, whatever it is related content on the channel this week, 
Um, it's all been because of health, health reasons. And I was stressing out about making a video, but I got to a point where I felt like, um, I don't want to say I didn't care this week, but my health really did take priority over making a video. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's why there, there really isn't one this week. So my apologies, you know, for not being able to, to get up a video content on this week. Next week, hopefully I'll have something filmed, assuming that um, nothing impacts my health this week. Uh, I feel like I'm doing a little bit better, but um, we'll see. I'm hoping that some of you all can uh, can relate with some of these things too. And, and my hopes is not like misery loves company. It's more of knowing that there's somebody else out there who shares the same thing that you're struggling with as well um, and that you could relate to. With that being said, like I said, I have a lot of things that still need to be done, uh, videos that need to be uh, produced and created, um, collaboration videos that I have scheduled and planned, parts that are gonna be going on, um, finishing off the rest of the Mini Cooper build series. I think I have like at least a dozen videos left on this thing. Um, I want to introduce the new motorcycle to the channel here soon, um, as well as the new sports car we're going to be adding uh, to the channel too. It's going to be a nice one, um, so that'll be that'll be fun. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead, join the Bertini family, click that subscribe button and the notification bell, this way you're notified every single time. I put out a new video. I'm hoping that you decide to join the Bertini fam. With that being said, make sure you're putting out good energy into the world and you're paying it forward. I'll check y'all out later. Bye now.